Uh, forgive me for a moment, I will just explain about Holy Communion. Yesterday I explained that all those who receive Holy Communion on tongue, uh, supposed to, they should sit in the first very pew. Uh, we have uh, like this pew, which, you know, uh, of course we have keep social distance. Uh, another one also here, the first pew, and also two other sections. Uh, so everyone who would like to receive Holy Communion on tongue has to sit in this, this first pew. Uh, because, you know, that will help, uh, you know, to, to see who is receiving. And I know that on Saturday there was a, a small problem because we, you know, many people are sitting, you know, spread around. So that will help, okay? Uh, you know, those two pews, they have uh, kneelers. So if we receive, someone receives on tongue and uh, kneeling, so it's like only two options there. there. Of course, there is handicap, so also the person can sit there. So those who are choosing to receive Holy Communion on tongue, they're supposed to sit in the first pew. And also on Sunday, on Masses on Sunday, Saturday evening and Sunday, those who receive on tongue and gluten-free, uh, they have to sit in this part. Okay, if that makes sense? Okay, thank you so much.
Let us pray together. Father of goodness and love, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Remember at this Mass this morning, the repose of the soul, Maria Connell and Deacon Bob Esposito. In the Gospel today, Jesus tells Peter that he must put his trust in him if he wants to be a good follower. So as we gather here this morning, and we begin this day by celebrating together the Eucharist, let us put our trust in the Lord so that we too may be good followers. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, and now we pray with a spirit of wisdom those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishment of the holy flock may become the eternal joy of your shepherd, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself. If one, anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruse. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, 
the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend the mountains of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what it is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gethsemane. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were, wa were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked them to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. And Simon said and replied, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the outer boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of the fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now on you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. A man reflected how fishing for him had been a disaster. Three times he had tried it. Three times he had failed. It's probably not enough of a test, but what could he say? Part of it was his lack of patience. Like Simon Peter, he would have not wanted to go out again for another difficult day on the sea with nothing to show for it. We are all 
a lot like Peter. It seems clearly that is why Jesus told him, chose him to be his closest disciple. Jesus knew Peter's flaws and he loved him dearly. That too is like us. Jesus knows our flaws. He knows we are sinners. He knows we prefer to take the easy way out. But in spite of all this, he loves us and wants us by his side. There will be days when fishing will be very good. So have faith. Now let us continue by praying the universal prayer. As followers of the Lord, let us join together to present our needs to the Father who loves us. For our holy church, may the Lord protect her from all evil and sanctify her for his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public, corporate, and civic leadership, may the Lord guide their hearts and minds in the ways of charity and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by poverty, illness, depression, or hopelessness, may the Lord be their sustenance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, through the intercession of St. Gregory the Great, may we continue to grow in holiness and virtue. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, May they eternally rejoice in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to this pandemic and for those suffering as a result of it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, for God's protection during this current era of prejudice and rioting, for a return to peace and understanding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters, Christians all over the world, and for the suffering souls in purgatory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For any special prayers or petitions we have in our prayer book, and any special petitions and prayers we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayer we have offered in love and with trust to your care as your children. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For in your goodness we have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands, who become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the fruit of the vine, the work of our human hands, who become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that the sacrifice we present and celebration of Saint Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering we have loosed the offenses of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it's truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks to our Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on this, the festival of St. Gregory, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by the words of his preaching, and keep her safe an answer to his prayers. So with all the company of angels and saints, we sing him of your praise, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out for them the spirit of your spirit, that these gifts may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we, as we, and whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were, at, were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us for the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become a lasting sign of his covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread giving thanks, said a blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things to himself through the blood he shed upon the cross. He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once again, giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. It's the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection <clears throat> until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our fruitful and merciful God, this, e this e sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and this one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. <clears throat> be pleased to keep us always in communion in mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, the bishops, clergy, 
deacons, religious, and all the people who serve you. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at the hour we stand before you, saying among saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, St. Gregory, St. Mark the Evangelist, all the saints, as well as our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully <clears throat> into a new creation, we will sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. In the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, for the help of your mercy, be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, the only who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ. The body of Christ.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Through Christ our teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that in this the feast day of St. Gregory, they may learn your truth and express in its work of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in hope and peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.